maybe since I've been here, uh, with the role that hedge funds play in trying to shape public policy. Uh, actually, it's been pretty shocking to me to see the, the lengths that some hedge funds will go to try to shape public policy in a manner that, uh, that might reap huge benefits. I was on the way up this week and catching a flight out of Chattanooga and had a bunch of county mayors talking to me and they said, you know, uh, Corker, what's this about Congress uh, bailing out Puerto Rico? And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Said, uh, and I'm not taking a position on the issue itself, but I said, you know, look, uh, there is no taxpayer money plan for Puerto Rico. These, a bunch of hedge funds have bought Puerto Rican debt in the last year and a half, and they want to make sure that uh, they keep in a priority position. They're able to make as much off this as possible. That's what's happening here. There's no discussion that I'm aware of of taxpayers being involved in, in bailing out uh, Puerto Rico. So I, I knew Mr. Ackman was going to be here, and again, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. I, I had read some comments you had made about Herbalife, uh, and, uh, and basically what you had said, that you would take your bet against the company to the end of the earth, and I guess it's been well documented, the case you made to do that, and what you did to try to influence even public officials, and which again is perfectly legal. Um, I just wondered if you might share with us uh, some of the investments whereby you have made investments in various companies and then have tried to influence public officials, uh, if you will, to make sure that you had a good outcome. Uh, Herbalife is the only one. Uh, that's the only one. Only one I can think of. Yeah. Yes. So that's interesting. Uh, um, let me just ask another question then. Uh, so you haven't been involved at all in trying to shape public opinion regarding Fannie and Freddie. I know you've been meeting with numbers of legislators and... I, have, I haven't been meeting with members of legislators about Fannie and Freddie. Yeah. I've certainly have attempted to shape public policy by putting out a, a public presentation, but I have not met with any members of Congress or the Senate about Fannie and Freddie at all. Herbalife is the only time in our 12-year history that we have lobbied uh, Congress, and uh, what I mean by that, I, I met with a number of members of the Congress and the Senate. Uh, I think Herbalife is causing enormous harm. I wish there would, I wish you would hold a hearing on it. Uh, this is a company that is taking, um, you know, pretty much the entire savings of mostly uh, Latino um, members of our society, uh, many of them undocumented and therefore not in a position uh, to defend themselves. And, uh, you know, this is an SEC registered company. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, it's causing enormous uh, harm and, uh, you know, I, fortunately, the FTC has launched a formal investigation. Uh, the SEC has launched a formal investigation. Um, you know, the people who have been harmed, unfortunately, are still waiting uh, you know, for the government to finish their work. Um, we understand the FTC is closed. If I could, that's, that's good. And I, I, I've got seven minutes, but I appreciate that. And maybe the chairman of the committee would, would have a committee, on, uh, committee meeting on that. And I'd be I'd yes. happy to come. That'd be good. Um, well, never the 13th. Uh, 2015 Fortune uh, Fortune article mentioned that under recap and release of Fannie and Freddie, uh, your company, which I understand invested about 400 million dollars uh, after the government had taken over these entities, so I think this was around 2013, that you had invested about 400 million dollars in these companies. I think it was 388 to be accurate. That over a five-year period, if you could cause Congress to or the administration to, or if they just were recapped and released, that you would uh, make uh, somewhere between seven and eight billion dollars off that investment. Is that, is that accurate? Uh, I think what we said is, you know, the taxpayers own 80 percent of Fannie and Freddie. Uh, Twenty percent is held by the public. Uh, our view is uh, that preserving the 30-year prepayable fixed rate mortgage is critical for the country, critical for the housing market, and that it's, it's not going to continue unless Fannie and Freddie continue to exist. But would your investment, which was the question, uh, I know you're getting into a philosophical discussion about the company, but sure. the 400 million you invested, if you could just call them to go back and do business the way that they were in the beginning, would yield you uh, about $8 billion, is that correct? I mean, I think if, if Fannie and Freddie, if the government didn't sweep away all the profits and they were allowed to retain capital and continue in the business that they were formed to do, uh, our investment would appreciate, and the taxpayers would have another three or four hundred billion dollars yeah. that could be used for but, other but good just, purposes. Again, to be specific, your company uh, would make about eight billion dollars. I mean, these are in your own projections. Is yeah. that correct? Uh, I, I hope it happens. I mean, we made the investment 
hoping to make a profit. I think our interests are aligned with what's good for the country. Um, and, I'm, and I'm happy to, I appreciate the and, opportunity and look, to speak to you. Uh, yeah, I'm glad to talk with you and hopefully we'll talk about it another time. Then I'll come see you. Yeah. I, I, I noticed also, though, in your public statements that you made a statement. So you have a company that if it can go back to the status quo, by the way, you bought this stock after the sweep, the dividend sweep was put in place. So you knew all the conditions as they exist today. But you invested 400 million hoping somehow that they would be recapped and released. And so I was instrumental in passing a piece of legislation called Jumpstart. Other members voted for it. Um, but uh, I noticed in your statements to the public and maybe on a, a conference call, you mentioned that you thought people misunderstood what Jumpstart did. I was wondering if you might explain to me what you mean. Uh, well, look, my, I'm of the view uh, that Fannie and Freddie uh, are here to stay and that there would be no housing market without Fannie and Freddie, and that we did buy stock after the government uh, stepped in and expropriated 100% of the profits from these two institutions forever. And I believe that in this country, uh, the, you know, the government cannot take private property without just compensation. I'm not looking for compensation. Uh, I just want, you know, the government stepped in and bailed out Fannie and Freddie, did so like they did with AIG and with Citigroup and other banks, and it was a, there was an expensive a bailout. Um, but $188 billion. And, the, and the Fannie and Freddie have returned $260 billion to the taxpayer. The, and this never, not a dime of that would have been earned without, a, without taxpayers standing behind them. Let me just say this. Let me explain to you what I think Jumpstart meant. Jumpstart said that these companies were not going to be recapped and released unless Congress said so for the next two years. It's my hope to extend that beyond. And that our job here is to ensure that we don't return to the same model of private gains and public losses where taxpayers have lost $188 billion. Uh, this is a very unusual setup. I think if you were wearing a different hat, you would agree that it's most unusual to have a company like this with taxpayer backing that when things go well, uh, taxpayers do well and they don't. Uh, private uh, citizens pick up the tab, the public picks up the tab. So I, what I would like to explain to you is what it meant was is that over the next couple of years, Congress uh, is going to try to reform these entities so that that arrangement doesn't exist anymore. I'm committed to that. I think many members up here are committed to that. And what that means is, and all I hope is that we're not going to just return. I know numbers of hedge funds have made investments in this entity. Numbers of them are betting against Congress's ability to reform these. And I just, I would love to talk to you about this, but I, I'm just saying, I think, I think what Jumpstart meant was that Congress plans to reform these entities to change this arrangement so that we don't have a scenario like we have right now where, look, I'm all for people making money, but doing so in a system that is not favorable to taxpayers is not a good way to do it. So. Sure. I, I, again, I feel bad about distracting the hearing from, from the topic at hand, but I, I, we share your same goal. We believe that we can, we have a solution to the problem that benefits the taxpayer, does not socialize the risk of the two institutions, and I will come see you, and I appreciate your offering me that opportunity. Very good. Thank you.